let's go ahead and review exponent properties. If you have two bases that match and they're multiplied together, you add the exponents. When you divide bases, you subtract exponents. When you have two bases multiplied together, raised to an exponent, you distribute that exponent through to each factor. When you have a fraction raised to an exponent, you can distribute the exponent to the numerator and the denominator. When you have a power raised to a power, you can multiply the powers together. When you have something raised to a zero exponent, it's equal to one. When you have a negative exponent, you simply flip it to the other side of the fraction bar and change the sign of the exponent. This is the true for if they're in the denominator as well. You can simply bring it to the numerator and change the sign. If you have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, you simply flip the fraction over and change the sign of the exponent. Let's try example one. In example one, we have many different fractional exponents. Without getting too overwhelmed, we remember that we have matching bases. When we have matching bases, we add exponents. Let's go ahead and rewrite the matching bases next to each other. The exponents are four-thirds and five-fourths. Before we can add the fractional exponents together, we must get a common denominator. The common denominator would be 12, so we multiply the first one by 4 over 4 and the second one by 3 over 3. Moving on to the y's, we have a common denominator of or ba matching base of y, and so let's go ahead and write those next to each other. They already have a common denominator of 7. The first y is 2 sevenths, and the second y is 3 sevenths. We can add those two fractional exponents together because their bases or their denominators already match. I'm going to go ahead and leave x to the 1 half, y to the 7, or sorry, 6 sevenths alone until I've simplified the numerator. Looking at the x's, I now have x to the 16 twelfths plus 15 twelfths. Adding those together, I get 31 twelfths. And y, adding y's together, I have 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, which is 5 sevenths. Again, it's still over x to the 1 half, y to the 6 sevenths. From here, I can use the quotient rule. Remember, I can take the exponent in the denominator and subtract it from the exponent in the numerator. And that way I can get rid of my denominator. Now it's just over 1. So now I can build up my 1 half because it needs a common denominator of 12 by multiplying by 6 over 6. This will give me x to the 31 twelfths minus 6 twelfths, y to the 5 sevenths minus 6 sevenths. This simplifies to x to the 25 twelfths y to the negative one-seventh. To get that negative exponent positive, I simply shift it across the fraction bar, which is over one, to make the exponent positive. And my final answer is x to the 25 twelfths over y to the one-seventh, and it's positive. Let's look at example two. 
I'm going to find all my negative exponents first and shift them across the fraction bar so I don't have to worry about negative exponents. I also notice that I have 256. 256 is the same as 2 to the 8th. Before I flip my fraction over, I'm going to simplify what's inside. So now I have 2 to the 8th, x, x to the 3 halves, x to the positive 5 halves from here, and in the denominator, I have x to the 1 fourth, y to the 3 halves, and y from right here to the positive 1 third. And remember that this is all raised to the negative 1 eighth. From here, I can simplify the x's and the y's by adding the exponents because I'm multiplying the bases. This gives me 2 to the 8th, x to the 3 halves plus 5 halves, which gives me 8 halves, all over x to the 1 fourth, y to the 3 halves plus 1 third. I need to get a common denominator before I can add these two together. The common denominator is 6. So now I will have y to the 9 sixths plus y to the 2 sixths. Again, this is all raised to the negative 1 eighth. Now I have 2 to the 8th x to the 8 halves all over x to the 1 fourth y to the 11 sixths. And this is all raised to the negative 1 eighth. Continuing on, I can Use the quotient rule to subtract 1 quarter from 8 halves, and I have 2 to the 8th x to the 8 halves minus 1 fourth over y to the 11 sixths, all raised to the negative 1 eighth. From here, I need to get a common denominator of 4 by multiplying by 2 over 2. I get 2 to the 8th x to the 16 fourths minus 1 fourth all over y to the 11 sixths raised to the negative 1 eighth. And then simplifying further, I get 2 to the 8th x to the 15 fourths over y to the 11 sixths, all raised to the negative 1 eighth. I'm going to flip it over and I get 2 to the 8th in the denominator and x to the 15 fourths in the denominator, y to the 11 sixths in the numerator, all raised to the positive 1 eighth. Multiplying the exponent in, I get y to the 11 48ths, 2 to the 8 over 8, x to the 15 over 32. So the only thing that simplifies further is 8 over 8, which is just 2 to the first power, so we get y to the 11 48ths over 2, x to the 15 32nds.